Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Rob, for inviting me. It's a great honor and a great pleasure to be among all those wonderful people and the wonderful education. Uh, as uh, Marion said, uh, I, we are here together. And uh, we started that together, so it's a great to be back uh, here again uh, and uh, uh, participating in uh, this amazing online event. Uh, so as we see, uh, as we see, I'm going to talk about how can I get my students to like me. Okay, well, uh, it is true that uh, uh, the, the first steps of uh, teaching are not always uh, very easy. So uh, when I started teaching, actually, I felt like uh, being uh, in uh, swimming in deep waters. And uh, uh, actually, I felt like that, like being a new teacher that is trying to fly an airplane while building it. And uh, this is a great analog because actually it portrays uh, my kind of uh, emotions uh, when I step into the class for the first time. And uh, it are difficult things to do. And uh, I, I realized that it was nothing, uh, nothing, that, uh, that is nothing that had to do with uh, all we uh, have been learning uh, in, at the university. Actually, it was something that uh, we didn't learn. And uh, I found out that it was something that I had to uh, deal with uh, in, uh, in the real world and dealing with, uh, with real stuff. So um, when, I, when, when, when teachers uh, step into a class for the first time, actually they believe that uh, uh, by making uh, students to like them and respect them, they can do that. Uh, uh, by accepting bad excuses, or maybe uh, they feel that uh, being very toler tolerant with their students, uh, so students love them, but uh, this is not true, and uh, this is not as it is. So I think that, uh, first of all, uh, when you want to, when you want respect from your students, you must give uh, respect, and uh, first this is, uh, first of all, this is by treating each other as an individual and uh, by uh, try to uh, take care of them and catering different, uh, different learning preferences, strengths, and uh, weaknesses. And uh, you, are not, you are not the boss of learning. You, you are not smarter than them. And uh, you, don't, you must not press to know that uh, you know all the answers. We don't know all the answers, and uh, this is the truth. So we must encourage our kids uh, to take uh, learning in their own hands and uh, uh, learn with and uh, from our students, and uh, laugh with our students, uh, and uh, no, never, never uh, actually um, underestimate them. So we have to create a safe environment uh, where students uh, don't fear failure. I think uh, this is uh, this is the first uh, priority. Um, the next uh, thing that uh, I believe uh, it is very important in order to gain uh, our students' uh, respect and to get us like uh, to, to, get, uh, to get them like us. Uh, is uh, honesty and uh, as uh, Franklin Benjamin Franklin said, honesty is the best policy. And uh, is say say what you mean and uh, mean what you say. I think this is uh, the best rule. And uh, we must not pretend. We must not show a different face. We must be. Uh, uh, we must say what we mean, and uh, we can. And if we say, for example, that uh, not accept late assignments, we do not accept late assignments. So we must uh, uh, follow the rules that we set, and uh, we must not put them in a situation of asking tricky questions. Uh, this is part of honesty and sincerity. Um, so the next uh, thing that is very, very important in order to uh, make our students uh, like us and to uh, gain uh, their respect is uh, to uh, have high expectations of our students. It's very, very important. And uh, I think 
that they, it is amazing of how they can push themselves to meet uh, those expectations. Otherwise, uh, if they are frustrated, they will feel frustrated as well. And uh, if, uh, if we tell them, keep telling them how amazing they are and how important, much do we believe in them, so I think that uh, this is the best that we can do for them. And uh, if we believe uh, in their success and tell them how sure we are about that, so uh, they will succeed in uh, uh, in uh, uh, in their goals. They, they will they will uh, keep trying to uh, meet their goals and to uh, to do that uh, not only for ourselves, not only for us as teachers, but uh, for themselves as well, because they will believe that they are the best and. Uh, uh, they have uh, skills and they they have uh, uh, very uh, very uh, good uh, uh, qualities in order uh, to go on in their lives. Um, another very important thing is to show them that you care and uh, to be on their side and hold their hand. I think this is very very important as well. And. Uh, uh, we have to let them brainstorm problems or problems learning. And uh, we have to ask them uh, what they love, what they are afraid of, what they are curious about, what they want to contribute to. And uh, it is um, actually a self-directed a self learning that we have to provide, provide uh, this uh, autonomy support. And uh, they can uh, understand that they can learn from each other. They can uh, learn uh, in a collaborate spirit and uh, embrace a collaborate learning. Also, foster a sense of confidence, and we can do that through gamification. We can encourage them uh, to uh, adapt a specific response or, or to have a specific behavior. And uh, sometimes uh, there are these uh, less visible actions that they can become uh, visible and they can be a light uh, because of uh, because of us because we uh, encourage uh, these uh, actions to be uh, visible uh, another very important thing is to promote competition uh, only because we can help our students to track their progress and uh, to see if, how much they can do. And they believe, of course, in themselves. Also, a very important thing is to establish a positive, a positive teacher-student relation and uh, to inspire them. This is also very vital and very important. We can inspire them uh, by inviting a guest speaker to talk about, uh, to, to share his, uh, to share his experiences uh, with them, or to encourage them to par in participate uh, in projects and uh, collaborate and create uh, something uh, as a team. Another very important thing is static boundaries okay so we may uh, be the hero for our students and sometimes students believe that they are we are our, we are our friends but okay we are not our friends we can be friendly but uh, not be our friends <laughs> it is, a, it is a something that uh, we have to put a limit on that and uh, we have to let the students know our limits we have to be clear and specific about which options uh, are available and the times and conditions and the positive outcome is available. And we have to set our boundary before there is a conflict. And uh, so we have to predict everything. And we have to be prepared to follow through. And most important is, uh, for example, be uh, we must uh, be. We must give promises. Like, for example, we can play this game if you finish these activities. So we must be positive and not negative. We use positive statements and not negative statements. 
All right. Another, I think, I think that uh, a lot, most of us know that uh, when we are uh, uh, be uh, in class, uh, we uh, have to, uh, we we feel like uh, playing a role, like actors, and uh, so this this is something that uh, I, I this is an idea that I uh, took from uh, uh, Patricia Palmer when uh, I did a post on Facebook. Uh, about analog. So uh, this is something that she, she gave me this idea for this analog, that uh, teaching is like acting. If you were in five plays at once and you had to give every audience member a one-one performance, I think this is an excellent analog to, sh to show that uh, so when you are there, uh, you be, you, you act. Of course, uh, a lot of said that uh, you must be passionate. I think this word uh, is heard uh, a lot, and uh, for, uh, uh, and from many teachers today. And uh, just I want to say thank, you. and don't forget that uh, it is the supreme art of the teaching to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. And I really believe in that. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, Rob. It was a great pleasure.